All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and a lot has happened since my last video. We got to talk about all of it. Most notably, we just re-signed Bobby McCain to a two-year deal worth $11 million. We lost Tim Settle and JD McKissick to the same team, the Buffalo Bills. It seems like it's just a triangle of players. We take a lot of players from Carolina, they take a lot of players from us, and just it's just basically a triangle of players between those three teams. That's why people call the Buffalo Bills the Carolina North, they call us the Carolina Mid-Atlantic, and then, of course, just the regular Carolina Panthers. So I'm gonna break down everything that's happened since the last time I released a video, the fact that we missed out on Marcus Williams, which pretty much led to us getting Bobby McCain. There were reports that we were very, very interested in free safety Marcus Williams Williams who got a really nice contract with the Ravens sadly and shortly after he signs with the Ravens we signed Bobby McCain so that just shows that we were pursuing Marcus Williams once he was off the table we were fine with going with Bobby McCain which means I guess we were never interested in Tyron Matthew in the first place Marcus Williams off the board Bobby McCain signed fairly soon afterwards pretty much cause and effect right there for sure but again we're gonna dive into everything that's gone down within like the past 24 hours and I'm gonna give y'all reasons to be more optimistic than I know our fan base wants to be right now with everything going on. We're missing out on a lot of players that are signing elsewhere. But of course, we got to talk about a lot of players that are still available, especially at important positions like linebacker. And also... Things could be worse. We could be the Cowboys losing all of our players. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, of course, man, I'm gonna keep y'all updated on everything going on with the Breaking and Gold, all the signings, re-signings, all the guys we lost, and guys that are still available that we should go get at positions of need. Again, Stay tuned for everything. I'm working on a Carson Wentz film session on how he can take this Scott Turner offense to a new level. I'm excited about bringing y'all all of that content. And soon after the dust settles and everything seems just about finalized, all of the big names already signed the places. Hopefully we get a couple of them like a Bobby Wagner. We'll see. Then I'm going to do a mock draft soon afterwards based on the needs that we still currently have. But without further ado, let's get it. All right, so we got to start with the most recent news. We re-signed safety Bobby McCain to a two-year $11 million deal, which is actually really good value. I know a lot of people don't like Bobby McCain that much. And of course, a guy like me really wanted to shoot for Marcus Williams or even Tyron Matthew. Quandre Diggs was re-signed back to the Seahawks very early in free agency, so he was already off the table. And there's other names out there, but I can see why Washington prefers to continue to go into the bargain bin and sign guys for cheaper that are going to give you similar production paying Bobby McCain $5 million a year versus Tyron Matthew at like $15 million a year. And it's been working for us generally. In the second half of the year, he started to really earn that paycheck, and he started to play like a guy that deserved to be paid more than $5 million a year. So that's why this is a bargain. First half of the year was ugly, but him and Cameron Curl started to gain a really nice chemistry towards the end. Now, I'm not going to necessarily count those interceptions against the Giants, Jake Fromm, and then like the situations, like one of them was like straight to him and things like that. So I'm not going to overhype those interceptions at all. But just overall, like just in general, he was a better safety once he got more comfortable in the defense. Basically like how Landon Collins, once we moved him to the safety linebacker hybrid role, how much more productive he was. Bobby McCain had a similar rise in production and comfort within Jack DeRio's defense the second half of the season after the bye week. It wasn't as much of a meteoric rise as Landon Collins was, but it was definitely a very noticeable improvement. Which is why, like, I'm okay with Bobby McCain being our star free safety if we end up going that way. I still prefer to draft Daxton Hill. Like, if we don't take Malik Willis or Cal Hamilton doesn't fall to 11 for some crazy reason, I prefer to trade back. I feel like all of the receivers are fairly similar in talent. You can debate why Jamison Williams is the best receiver in this class. You can debate why Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Traylon Burks, a lot of these guys. And I feel like if you trade back, you'll still have at least three of those guys that I just out of the guys I just named right there as options if you trade back and if you trade back you also may get another late first round pick early second round pick and then you can probably get my boy Daxton Hill who I would love to be our franchise rangy free safety I think Daxton Hill will be perfect I think he's literally going to be a Marcus Williams clone 
maybe just a little bit faster if anything so if we can snag him late first round early second whatever you got to do i'm down but back to bobby mccain i mean he's serviceable as a starter pro football focus has him ranked as the 26th best safety out of the entire nfl last year and that's including his terrible first half if it was only just based on the second half of the season he'd probably be top 15 honestly but just his overall grade of the season that first half weighed his grade down dramatically i mean just like in school you fail in the whole first semester then you try to get it together the second semester your grade averages out it's not gonna look too good but you can project maybe that that second semester is how you're gonna be for the next year and if so that can possibly be really good i mean if you just isolate coverage grade by itself he had a 72.6 which was better than jesse Bates, better than juan thornhill jimmy ward Jordan Whitehead, Terrell Edmonds, and only slightly behind Justin Simmons, Adrian Amos, Kyle Duggar, Jeremy Chin, and Devin McCourty. Like they're all in the same range, just slightly behind Trevon Merrick, which we should have drafted, but you know, moving on from that. This made sense to keep him. I know this is not the exciting signing right now, and hopefully things will start to heat up and we'll start being mentioned with guys like Jordan Hicks and like mainly linebacker right now my primary focus is getting a free agent linebacker there's still guys out there Bobby Wagner most notably we have Jordan Hicks the Falcons linebacker already went to the Jaguars and they paid him a lot of money even more than I was willing to pay him so I guess I'm kind of glad we didn't get him because if we had to outbid that that would have been crazy but there's still AJ Johnson from the Denver Broncos he hasn't been re-signed to the Denver Broncos yet there's a lot of options out there Kyle Van Noy I believe is still available there are so many options at linebacker out there there would be immediate upgrades to our group and it, I think the draft is just really ugly for linebackers because we specifically need a middle linebacker really bad right now, like a straight Mike. Love N'Kobe Dean. This is lifelong Georgia Bulldog fan. You see it in the banner of my YouTube channel, but I don't necessarily see him as a stack and shed type of Mike linebacker. We need a big, strong guy that can go up head first against guards, move them out the way, and make a tackle in the run game. I think N'Kobe Deans has all pro potential, but we already have a really fast guy, a outside linebacker with athleticism and Jamin Davis. Now, of course, I believe N'Kobe Dean is obviously gonna end up being better than Jamin Davis, but we need a Mike linebacker specifically. There's no reason to just go ahead and throw away your first round pick and Jamin Davis and replace him with N'Kobe Dean when you can spend those picks elsewhere. Who knows? I mean, when in doubt, you can get Darian Beavers maybe in the second. We don't have a third round pick. Hopefully he slides to the fourth, but I doubt it. From Cincinnati, I think he would be a great pickup in Mike Linebacker if we don't get one in free agency. But like I said, there's so many options in free agency, man. Go get one of them. We can always clear cap space if we want to by trading away Ionitis which may be a little complicated now that we lost Tim Settle. And that's really interesting too, because now Tim Settle is going to Buffalo alongside his Virginia Tech teammate, Tremaine Edmonds. That's a really interesting connection there as well. But the fact that they took JD McKissick and Tim Settle away from us within the same free agency period does hurt. Tim Settle, I can see why we let him go. We're already planning on paying Deron Payne. We already paid Jonathan Allen. We're gonna pay Chase Young. We're more than likely gonna pay Montez Sweat. It's just too much money wrapped up in a defensive line. Ionitis, love what you've done for this team, but that $8 million cap pit would be really useful right now to spend in free agency. And we could just draft the interior defensive line depth in the draft or get some bargain deals in free agency if we got to to clear up that cap space, in my opinion. Again, it's more complicated now that Tim Settle's gone and we'll lose our top two depth defensive tackles if we were to do that. But hey, man, I think we need to go make a splash at linebacker, in my personal opinion. But if we end up keeping Matt Ionitis this season, cool. He'll definitely get more playing time with Tim Settle off the team and going back to Tim Settle that made sense we just didn't have enough money to give all of our defensive linemen big money so he's gonna go to Buffalo where he'll have a larger role I think he's gonna play fantastic I'm rooting for him that makes sense the JD McKissick signing now positives and reasons why we let him go maybe we're more worried about that neck injury than Buffalo is but like JD McKissick for the money that he signed especially let's let's ignore how talented JD McKissick is first of all let's let's just start with the money that he signed for i mean a two-year seven million dollar deal for jd mckissick i don't know man 3.5 million dollars a year and it was reported earlier in the offseason that we were really interested in bringing him back and we couldn't offer more than 3.5 a year for our third down guy and let's let's make sure we break this down because jd mckissick is 
not just a guy you bring in on third downs to catch a couple of passes out of the backfield. This is the guy that, first of all, is your best pass blocking running back out of the entire group, including Antonio Gibson, Jared Patterson, all of those guys. So when you need a running back to pick up a potential blitzer and keep Carson Wentz clean, J.D. McKissick was your guy. He's been that guy for us for the past couple of years when he's been healthy. And then also, I mean, he you can actually give him the ball with a straight face on first downs. Some third down backs literally only should play on third down. J.D. McKissick was solid on first downs. And then the fact that he was basically like a receiver, like you, you could actually ask him to run routes. He wasn't just running routes out of the backfield, like screen passes and, and wheel routes. Like you could actually put him out on the slot and ask him to get open if you needed to. I mean, he was just such a versatile piece, such a necessary piece. He did so many different things all in one player. When we talk about the positional flex, I'm surprised we let him go. There must be something way worse with his neck injury that we know about that the Buffalo Bills don't know about for us to allow him to leave for $3.5 million a year. This feels like the Eric Flowers situation where it's like what the Dolphins ended up paying him even though he didn't end up coming back and it worked out overall because now we're paying them less money than we would have originally but i doubt that happens with the jd mckissick situation first of all because he's on a two-year deal but this feels like the eric flowers situation where it was like man if i knew that he was only going for that much i would have chipped in me as in street scores would have been like hey Ron Rivera, here's some cash from me if, if that's all you need to go ahead and bring back Eric Flowers. And I feel the same with J.D. McKissick. I understand not re-signing J.D. McKissick if he was commanding crazy money. You don't pay just third down backs crazy money. But $3.5 million a year, we got it. Again, when in doubt, trade Ionitis and save up $8 million. And that's more than double what you'd be paying J.D. McKissick. I'm surprised, but... At the end of the day, I feel like the main takeaway from this J.D. McKissick loss is that we plan on throwing it down the field all of the time. We brought in Carson Wentz because we have so many deep threats in Terry McLaurin, De'Ami Brown. Hopefully we bring back DeAndre Carter and Curtis Samuel once he's healthy. So that makes sense. But letting J.D. McKissick go as your safe check down option sounds like we won't be using check down options often. Sounds like we may run a screen with Antonio Gibson maybe here and there but we're about to be chucking it down the field. We about to be throwing it deep all season. Be prepared to see way less check downs. First of all, because we don't have JD McKissick anymore. So who's going to be that guy? And then also it looks like it's intentional. It looks like we pretty much weren't gonna prioritize re-signing JD McKissick because we plan on throwing it deep down the field a lot this season. And again, I say that because $3.5 million a year is easily good value for JD McKissick. We could offer them four. I would have been perfectly fine with giving them $4 million a year, me personally. And remember, like JD McKissick, even if he were just a third down back, a guy you bring in to catch passes on third down, that's it. Even ignoring the blocking, ignoring the change of pace, you can even run them on first downs, all of that type of stuff. Ignore all of that. He's also a really good third down back that catches passes on third downs. He's only second to Alvin Kamara in receiving yards out of all running backs in the NFL these past two seasons. So like, man, that's a lot of value you lose right there, but I guess he's not as valuable to us much anymore now that we have Carson Wentz. I think Carson Wentz, not only money, but his style of play combined for his JD McKissick out. And I'm assuming Scott Turner's like, well, we got Carson Wentz, no need to have JD McKissick anymore. I feel like you could have forced Carson Wentz to check it down. I mean, coach him up to do it. I feel like it would definitely help him make less mistakes, but hey man, it is what it is at this point. Just remember, you lost the guy that was second in receiving yards for our team last year. It was Terry McLaurin, then JD McKissick, then a big gap and everybody else. Remember that. We already felt like we were kind of lacking in playmakers. It's a bigger hole now. There's, there's options in the draft. You got my boy James Cook from Georgia later in the draft. You, you have several options in the draft. Hopefully we go and get one of those guys, please. You can pretty much stamp us drafting a running back somewhere late in the draft or bringing in some undrafted free agents. I'd be very surprised if we don't bring in at least two third down backs to compete with each other. Cause I mean, I love Antonio Gibson, but like until he can prove that he's not a fumble monster, I'm not too confident in expanding his role even further than what it already is. I mean, it's even sadder because JD McKissick said he wanted to come back. So it's just, it was all on our side. We just didn't value him enough to pay him over $3.5 million a year. And speaking of linebacker, earlier today, the Jaguars released linebacker Miles Jack, athletic freak. If we're talking about linebacker draft prospects the last 10 years, coming out of college, he was one of the best. 
definitely in the top 10 as far as college prospects now when he got to the nfl had a couple of really good seasons then he fell off then he had a really good bounce back 2020 season and then he had a bad 2021 season arguably his worst season of his nfl career maybe you can get miles jack for very cheap basically another reuben foster situation where instead of it being injuries, it's more so just he needs to bounce back and have better defensive players around him. The Jaguars defense wasn't really good last season. And so maybe he just fell victim from trying to do too much within our defense behind this defensive line. This secondary is actually fairly underrated. I know a lot of people hate Bobby McCain, but I think he's fairly solid. Cameron Curl's going to ball out. William Jackson showed that after the bye week another guy that was way more comfortable in jack del rio's defense don't know why it took till halfway through the season for so many guys to get comfortable with your defensive scheme definitely putting that on jack del rio but i'm optimistic about william jackson's future for this franchise because he looked like a shutdown corner the second half of the season like he was barely thrown towards guys were scared of even throwing towards him remember miles jack even in a down year led the jaguars in tackles last season with 108 now granted i'm gonna have to go look at his film and know why he fell off so bad last season why his pro football focus grades are so bad why i don't remember hearing his name and even watching a couple of jaguars game i forgot he was on the team at times i'm gonna have to go watch this film and see how much money i'd be willing to offer him in free agency can't exactly give you a number yet but man, if you want to take a flyer on another guy, again, I feel like he's a safer bet than Reuben Foster because Reuben Foster was just severe injuries back to back to back. And who knows if he, I mean, he was struggling to even learn to walk again, basically. Whereas Miles Jack is fairly healthy. He's just coming off of a bad year. But remember, if you go back and look at 2020, he actually had a really underrated year. And hey, man, please get him before the Cowboys do. I really hope the Cowboys do end up with Miles Jack or Bobby Wagner. Please. They're having a fairly bad offseason right now, and I don't want them to bounce back with signing one of those guys. Please, let's go ahead and be the ones to get them. But y'all already know how this goes, man. We don't normally sign big names. The past couple of years since Ron Rivera's been here, we've actually done a really good job of signing guys off the bargain bin. Logan Thomas, JD McKissick, who's now gone, but man, we revived his career. Nobody wanted him after the Detroit Lions released him. Him and Logan Thomas were both just wild cards. Like, well, we'll take a flyer on him. We see some potential. Pete Hayner saw some potential in Logan Thomas. Randy Jordan, I'm assuming, saw some potential in JD McKissick. And not only did they see the potential, but they brought him over here to develop them and to get the potential out of them. And now you see JD McKissick is one of the biggest talks of the day. Like, JD McKissick is well known around the nfl people are praising the bills for signing jd mckissick like regular nfl analysts but two years ago most of those guys would have heard jd mckissick's name and been like who so we've done a good job identifying talent and developing them getting the most out of them within the means of our offensive or defensive game plans and so i, I when in doubt we got to give our guys the benefit of the doubt Again, I really want like a Bobby Wagner, Jordan Hicks, one of those big names. I'll take a fly on Miles Jack, but we've been making it work. Cornelius Lucas, Charles Leno is now our franchise left tackle. Again, Logan Thomas, when healthy, should be our franchise tight end. Wes Schweitzer has been very clutch for us, filling in at any injury within the interior offensive line. And as of right now, it's technically our starting right guard. Still other options out there at guard if we want to sign a guy, but I was really sick when Mark Lewinsky, Lincoln Tomlinson, and Connor Williams all got signed, man. I was hurt about that. And then the Brandon Sheriff thing, haven't talked about that yet, actually, since the last time I did a video. That man signed for way less money than I expected. I guess he's banking on Trevor Lawrence and long-term success like five plus years down the line. But as of right now, we're easily a better team than the Jaguars. Maybe it's because Florida doesn't have tax, I guess. I don't know. Like, maybe that's why he chose. I just can't see it. He He's getting paid way less money than I expected. I was ready to move on from Brandon Sheriff, but like $15.5 million a year, I believe, is way less than what I expected. And I'm almost willing to pay that, but he's already gone. So that's neither here nor there, but we're shopping in the bargain bin once again right now. Technically, though, I mean, we, we've only re-signed guys. We haven't gone and got somebody from outside the team yet. So technically, we haven't even started that yet. 
but I'm going to give this team the benefit of the doubt. There's a lot of great names out there. Will we get them? Not sure. But who knows, man? We may sign some guys where we're like, who? And then end up balling out. Logan Thomas, JD McKissick, Cornelius Lucas, Wes Schweitzer, all guys notable in that category. Now, that's really crazy that the Bills took JD McKissick and Tim Settle from us within 24 hours of each other like that. That's just hate. They just been watching Washington Commander film for the past few months, just trying to pick out some of our players they want to take. Surprised they didn't take Bobby McCain from us. Well, they don't need him. They have one of the best safety tandems in the NFL, arguably the best. Y'all get my point. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video, man. Again, be patient, Washington Commanders fans. We got to give our team the benefit of the doubt because even when we sign the lesser known names, they end up working out and out producing their contracts, which is really smart. Ultimately, you save a lot of money and you have guys out there being productive. But I still want some blue chip, high impact players, high name players like a Bobby Wagner, pay him whatever he wants, whatever. But again, got to give them the benefit of the doubt and we'll see what happens you know within the coming days and what our draft needs will ultimately end up being hopefully we sign enough guys soon enough to where i can work on a mock draft so that i can really know where we're still lacking because if we just end up not signing a linebacker at all like not even a miles jack then i'm going linebacker at the lowest second round in my mock draft at the very lowest but we'll see man so definitely get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything so far free agency i already know the comment section is gonna be filled with so much animosity but man we just got to be patient yo and of course man i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now man i really appreciate y'all i'll catch y'all later i'm out